Motion control can sound intimidating, but it's actually one of the coolest ways to level up your stop motion. Let me show you how easy it is to animate with the Nox and Mode slider and Dragon Frame. In this deep dive, I'll show you exactly how to set it up, animate with it, and optimize your stop motion workflow. Quick transparency first, Noxon has kindly provided us with this unit, but all opinions and experience shared here are entirely our own. So let's get started. The Noxon Mode slider is a precision-built motion control slider made from aluminum and stainless steel. It's compact, strong, quiet and ideal for stop motion. It can handle up to 5kg horizontally or 3kg vertically. This is the animator kit version of the slider, which is paired with the new DMC control case, enabling a direct connection with Dragon Frame. This bridge allows you to control tracking, panning, tilting, and even focus or zoom. All programmable directly within the software. First up, let's get the hardware set up. I'm plugging in all four axes here, traveling, panning, tilting, and follow focus. You can definitely start with just one or two, but for this demo, I'm going all in so you can see what the full rig can do. Next up, I'm connecting the DMC control case to the slider with this 8-pin cable and linking it to my computer using the USB-C cable that comes in the kit. Once that's all connected, you'll hear a loud beep and a blinking light will let you know it's ready. Now that we've got the hardware all hooked up, let's switch over to the software side and get our motion control set up inside of Dragon Frame. In Dragon Frame, here's what you do. Go to Scene, Connections, click on Add Connection and select DMC32 and search for your connected device. Click Connect and you're good to go. One important thing to note, if you're already controlling your lights through a separate DMX box, like the DDMX512 in our case, you'll want to make sure to set the DMX setting of the DMC32 to No DMX. If you don't, the software might try to send DMX signals through your motion control connection and that can cause some conflicts, meaning your lighting automation just won't work. So yeah, quick but crucial step to keep your lighting and motion systems playing nice together. To further simplify the configuration, Noxon provides this handy preset file, a .arcx, that automatically maps all of the access and unit settings for you. To load the preset, you want to head over to the Arc Motion Control Workspace, click the little hamburger menu next to Add Access, hit Import, and select the Noxon preset file. I can then import this file and it'll create those four axes ready for me to start working. Um, what I can do as well is double click on each of them and change their icon. So this is just purely visual cues. So the traveling, I'm gonna go from north to south and panning, I'm gonna leave as is. Tilting, I'm gonna change that just to a more circular icon and focus is the more important one where I can change the function to focus and change the icon to zero to infinity, press OK. And now you can see I get this pop-up box each time I click on the focus track that allows me to really zoom in onto my subject and I can really nail that focus now. Here we go. Okay, perfect. That's it, this makes sure all of your motor movements like travel, pan, tilt and focus are perfectly calibrated and ready to sync up with your animation timeline. With everything set up, we can now animate our camera moves. In this test scene, I will animate a reveal shot by starting ultra close on a detail of this mannequin. Then I'll slowly track backwards as the camera tilts up and the pan and focus adjusts, revealing the full scene. Dragon Frame will automatically move the slider to the correct position before each frame capture, ensuring consistent and precise camera movements. Let's set our starting position first. Use the jog controls to move your rig into place, and when you're happy with it, hit key all to set a keyframe across all axes. Or just key them individually if you're being fancy. Now move your playhead to where you want the move to end, frame 60, 120, wherever you want, and position the rig at its final spot. Drop another keyframe and boom, that's your basic move from A to B. If you're using a focus motor, now's a good time to scrub through your timeline and check if your focus holds. If it drifts, adjust it and keyframe it on the focus axis. You can also pop open this focus area tool for a zoomed in precise view. 
Once your keyframes are all set, you can start refining the move. You can solo one axis at a time to check its path. And if you want a nice smooth ramp at the beginning or end, try adding a bit of feather to your keyframes or use the curves to adjust the easing. You can even add extra keyframes in between if you want something more complex. Now here's the important part. Click upload the move to send all your programming to the controller. Don't skip this step as nothing will happen until you do. Once it's uploaded, hit the little movie camera icon to shoot a move test. Dragon Frame will capture a preview using your live feed, not actual frames. So you can quickly check your motion before committing. Watch the move test and look for any bumps, jitters or focus issues. If something feels off, go back, take your keyframe or focus, upload the move again and shoot another test move. Rinse and repeat until it looks smooth. And if you're happy with the result, you can save the move by clicking the little film reel icon and naming it. That saves your programming and test footage as well. Super useful for reusing or tweaking later on. Oh, and quick bonus tip. If anything goes weird or you need to stop the move fast, just hit the escape key. That's your emergency stop. Okay, so now we are happy with the camera move test. We can now send this to the animation workspace. All we have to do is press on this ready to capture button and that will send the information of the camera move to sync in with the animation workspace. You can also see this ready to capture in the top left corner of the screen right here. Okay, so in the animation workspace to save some time, I'm going to shoot multiple frames. So I'm gonna let this run for 60 frames. I'll definitely stop this beforehand so I can start animating the mannequin. But that'll get me going with the camera move. Okay, so as you can see, the slider is doing its move and then at about 30 frames, I'm going to stop this multiple shots and I'm going to jump in here and start animating. I'm thinking of a just very basic action here, nothing fancy, just a puppet. Um, it's just saying hello, just a nice little wave and then have the arm go up, say hello and then the arm goes back down. All right, let's check out our camera move in action. Pretty cool, right? That's how we use the Noxon mode slider with Dragon Frame to create smooth, precise camera moves in stop motion. Honestly, it's amazing that a company like Noxon, based in Spain, has made motion control this accessible. Not long ago, gear like this was totally out of reach for most small studios. Now it's actually a real usable option. The quality is super solid, the setup is flexible, and we're generally excited to put this gear to work on upcoming projects. When we don't animate our camera, the slider is actually perfect for creating motion control time lapses and adding that extra layer of awesomeness to our behind the scenes footage. So whether you are using just one axis or going all in with four, tools like this really open up new creative possibilities. Oh, and we haven't even touched on combining these moves with lighting animation via DMX. But that's for another video. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, hit subscribe, and let us know in the comments how you're using or thinking about using motion control in your work. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep on creating.